In this demonstration, we'll be looking at ANSYS Discovery, which is a single application where we can analyze different physics, such as structural fluids and thermal models. ANSYS Discovery comes with three primary functions which we can perform, the first being geometry preparation, where we can import pretty much any third-party CAD part or assembly, or create our own, as well as modify the geometry to prepare our simulations. The second function is design exploration, which gives us very quick and real-time simulation results, even while we are modifying our design. And the third function allows us to fully validate our designs with ANSYS's highly accurate and proven solvers, such as Mechanical and Fluent. In this specific example, we'll be looking at a design known as a pizza box flyer. Some of these designs literally take a pizza box and with some modifications in a motor, they make it fly. Now, some of the challenges with this design is that it flies at a very high angle of attack and is extremely unstable flying. And they're also really sensitive to the total weight of the airplane and the weight distribution. So I'll be showing how we can use ANSYS Discovery to look at both the aerodynamics of the design as well as looking at some of the structural components for weight reduction. So let's walk through a really quick demo of ANSYS Discovery as far as setting up a model and how quickly we can get results. As you can see, I've already imported my assembly. I've done some modifications directly here in the interface. So I'm just gonna go to simulation, do external flow. You'll see it automatically creates an enclosure around my assembly. I'm gonna choose one side as the inlet and the other side as the base. And once the enclosure is created, we can simply hit the solve button and you'll see we instantaneously get a result here. Now we can change the shape of the streamlines. You can see we definitely get some wingtip vortices coming around the airfoil. And as we expected, you can really see some separation going on right above the plane. We can actually take our geometry and edit it on the fly. So in this case, I'm gonna take one of my control surfaces and just move it or pivot it. And as soon as I let go of the mouse, you'll see we get a new solution. So again, we can instantly see what happens to our airflow as we change the design. And similarly, we can look at a structural application where we might wanna look at stresses or deformations in specific parts or the whole assembly. In this case, I'm only gonna be looking at one part. So let's zoom into this part. You'll see I have a fixed support at one end of the control horn and a force at the other end representing the force due to the push rod. Now our simulation's all set up, so we simply go over here and hit solve. And you'll see I really quickly get a result. In this case, you're seeing a displacement result we can plot the deformed shape and we can show the animation as well. We can change the result from a displacement to a stress result. And we can see where our max stress is occurring right here at a sharp corner, right along this inner radius. Again, since we can get results quickly as we modify the geometry, I can simply take a face here, I can pull it or change the shape of it. And as soon as I let go, again, I get a new result. We can also look at results interior to the part by turning on this cut plane. So as you can see, we have a slice plane through our results and we can see what the results are interior to the part. We can take this plane, we can move it or slide it anywhere in the assembly we want to see what the results look like interior to our parts. Another way we can look at results is what we call an isosurface. So with an isosurface, we can see anywhere in the results a specific value occurs. So in this case, since we're looking at a von Mises stress, if I go to my iso value, I can change the slider and see anywhere in my results a specific value exists. So let's go back and look at some more details of the airflow simulation. So again, we have an inlet of five meters per second going over the airplane. I'll go ahead and hit solve and we'll get some initial streamlines. Now, as I said before, I can change the shape of where these streamlines are coming in from. I can move where they show. So again, a lot of options to kind of get you a good representation and visualization of where those streamlines are going. I'm gonna shrink these down a little. Uh, the other option we have in here is particles. So we can look at, in a general sense, how particles would flow over the aircraft. 
So if we look at this from a head-on view, again, we can see those wingtip vortices happening and what the general flow of the particles are. Another way to visualize the flow is through what we call particle emitters. So if I turn that on, you'll see I selected a specific location in 3D space to seed the particles from. Now, with a model such as this, you're really concerned about the airflow over your control surfaces. So I place the emitter right in front of the control surface. You'll see that you're getting a lot of circulation. In fact, some of the particles are going forward in the circulation and not totally over the control surface. So that's one thing I'm worried about. Um, if I turn on streamlines, again, we can see the streamlines. I'll shrink some of these down a little. And you can see the recirculation pattern right above the airfoil. And again, what our particles are doing inside there. So the question comes, you know, how can we solve some of this problem? Um, how can we get better airflow over our control surfaces? As we've shown before, you can manipulate the geometry right on the fly. So in this case, I'm going to create a rectangle directly on the wing. And we can simply extrude that rectangle down to create a slot. I'm also going to pick these two faces and we'll rotate them so the slot is more aligned with our airflow. And again, as I showed before, as soon as you let go of the mouse, it resolves the simulation. We're seeing a much better flow pattern coming over the wing, through the slot. And again, the particles that we imposed in front of the control surfaces are showing much better airflow in response over those. And just as we showed before, we can take those control surfaces and move them during the simulation. And as soon as I let go, again, it resolves the airflow around those. There's a few other options in the results we can look at. So let's go ahead and turn off the particles and the streamlines. And we can look at what we call isosurfaces. So let's change the result from velocity to a pressure result. And again, I can go into my isosurface setting, change the slider, and show anywhere where the low pressure occurs. And as I move the slider higher, I can see the high pressure occurs on the bottom of the airplane. Another option we have for post-processing is what we call monitors. So I'm going to go up here and add a monitor. We'll select pressure as our variable. We'll select the bottom face of one of these control surfaces. And as soon as I hit the check mark, you'll see that a value is created. So this gives me the average pressure on this control surface at this specific flow pattern. So let's go back to our structural simulation. We'll get into some more details about the stresses within the servo horn. So back in the structural simulation, let's go ahead and hit solve and we'll get the results fairly quickly. And again, if I change my results to a stress, I can turn on the max min flag and look at where my maximum stress occurs. So one of the things we'd like to look at is how does the stress change as we parametrically change this geometry? So what I'm going to do is Let's hide the results. We'll pick one of the faces, and we can use a power select to say pick all the faces with the same radius. We'll then use our pull tool, and we can pull the faces either to a tighter radius or a larger radius. I'm going to set it to 0.2 millimeters. And in addition to that, I'm going to go ahead and parameterize this dimension. So what that allows me to do is I can go down to my groups. Let's rename this to something more meaningful. We'll name it radius. And now if I click on radius, I can simply type in a new dimension, and it changes the radius of each of the four blends. The other thing I'd like to do is monitor the maximum stress on this interior faces as we make design changes. So I'm going to go up and click on Monitors. I'll select my variable as Von Mises Stress. I'll pick this inner loop. 
we're looking for the maximum stress and I'll hit the green check mark. And I'll just rename this to something more meaningful. I'll rename it to interior. So what this allows me to do is we'll run the simulation and I'll click on the monitor so that we get an actual graph of what that result is. So what you're seeing is in this simulation, the maximum stress on that inner loop is this value here. And what I'll do is I'll change my input radius that I set up before from 0.3 millimeters to 0.9 millimeters. The simulation will update. And you can see the graph updating accordingly. So this is nice if you want to manually change something in the geometry and you want to see what the result is. The other way is we can automatically set up these parameters. So how we do that is we come down to our design variable table and we can click on this create design variations and select our parameter as the radius. We'll change the value from 0.3 millimeters and we'll go up to one millimeter and we'll do four different steps. So when we hit create four design variations, we'll see our table automatically created of what our design studies will be. I can simply hit update all and you'll see the geometry changing according to what our inputs here are. The model will rerun and we'll get our outputs that we're looking for. So the other thing I can do is I can click on the graph icon. The x-axis will be my input parameter, which is the radius. The y-axis will be our von Mises stress of that interior loop. And as you can see in the graph, as the radius is automatically changed, the solution runs and we get different stress values. I can hover over any of these design points and see what my inputs were and what my outputs were. As I go back to the design table, I can look at my factors of safety and my stresses. And if there's a design that I'm specifically interested in, I can click on that set to current and it brings back that model and those results in the current display. As I mentioned before, the ANSYS Discovery Explore mode is a great way to get quick results in your studies. We can take this a step further and go into the Analyze mode to get high fidelity, more accurate results. All my loads and boundary conditions are automatically transferred into the simulation. All I have to do is go ahead and hit solve. It'll get automatically meshed with a finite element mesh, which we can review. And we can adjust the mesh if we need to, to get more accuracy out of our results. So given this result and the coarse mesh that we have, we might want to apply a local mesh refinement. So I'm going to choose local fidelity. I'll just happen to select the entire body. And we'll put in a much finer mesh. We'll go ahead and run the simulation. And as it's running, we can view the mesh that got applied. As you can see, we get a much more refined mesh, which tends to give us a more accurate result. Once the solution is finished, I'll turn off the mesh. We'll turn on our stress result and we'll show our max min locations similar to what we had before. However, now we're getting a more accurate solution. In summary, we demonstrated the ANSYS Discovery application, which includes the Explore mode, which gives quick results for CFD, structures, and thermal simulations, as well as the Analyze mode, which gives highly accurate results using the ANSYS Mechanical and Fluent solvers.